Welcome back to Invested, I'm Lockie, and today we'll get Salesforce, the SaaS giant. Over the past one year, the stock is up over 9.01%, but over the past one month alone, the stock has fallen 10.51% in value. So with a decent pullback in the price of Salesforce recently, the question naturally becomes, is the stock now undervalued, and is there a buying opportunity present? Well, today, I'm going to be answering that for you. I'm going to be breaking down the business, focusing on all the key factors. It's financial strength, profitability, growth to management, then give you a current valuation and price target for the stock going forward, telling you if Salesforce is a buy, hold, or sell at this time. If you enjoy this type of content, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So opening up our screener here, we're going to start off by assessing the financial strength of Salesforce. How financially strong is Salesforce as a company, and how likely is it that Salesforce can endure a financial downturn going forward? Well, if we come down here and have a look at the financial strength metrics, and of course when assessing the financial strength of any large company, there's really one key metric we focus on, and that is the cash to debt ratio. The cash the business currently has on hand to meet their short-term and long-term debts outstanding. And the current cash debt ratio for Salesforce is 0.67, indicating that for every dollar of debt the company has on hand, they only have 67 cents in cash to meet that debt obligation, not the most advantageous of financial positions. It indicates that if Salesforce's management so desired, they could only pay down 67% cent of their debt 67% of their debt outstanding before having to look to additional operational cash flows to pay down their additional debt obligations on both a principal and interest-based level. So not a fantastic cash debt ratio for the company. Some investors may initially be put off by this low cash debt ratio. I, however, am not at all. I realize that there's more to Salesforce than this basic cash debt ratio. Salesforce is one of the single most cash flow generative businesses in the world, generating massive amounts of free cash flow on a daily and monthly basis with recurring revenue products, giving them, giving them a tremendous amount of free cash flow in hand to pay down their debt obligations and continue to reinvest and grow their operations going forward. This great degree of free cash flow leaves them with an immense degree of financial stability, and this degree of financial stability is reflected in the high Altman score the company has been assigned. The company has been assigned an Altman score of 5.07 indicating a great degree of safety with the business and very little risk of financial default going forward. In the event of a financial pullback, Salesforce is exceptionally well positioned with massive amounts of free cash flow flowing in from operations consistently, giving them the ability not only to endure a financial downturn, but also reinvest and reinvigorate growth coming out of a pullback. So on a financial strength basis, by virtue of these consistent cash flows flowing in from operations, Salesforce is in an exceptional financial position. But that's simply the financial strength of Salesforce. Now, let's have a look at profitability. Let's see how profitable Salesforce is as a business. And if we come over here to profitability, and of course when assessing the profitability of any large firm, there's really four key things we focus on. Number one is the operating margins, number two the net margins, three the returns on equity, and number four the returns on assets. So if we come down here and start off with the margins, we've got margins on an operating basis of 3.67% and net margins of 6.96% both fairly low. These margins indicate that for every dollar of revenue that comes into Salesforce's business, right now they're only retaining about 7% in net profit. 7 cents of each dollar turns into profit for the company. Very, very low margins. And when you think about the nature of Salesforce's business, despite the fact that it's a growing company, I understand that, but it's within the software SaaS space. These are notoriously high margin companies, companies such as Microsoft, such as Adobe, with margins within that 20 to 40% range. And so to see margins this low on Salesforce is somewhat uncharacteristic of the industry in which it's operating. Going forward, I would like to see extreme margin expansion from Salesforce, with the company achieving margins anywhere between 20 to 30% over the long term. However, right now, given the current growth phase of the company, these margins I understand, but once more going forward over the long term, margin expansion for this business is an essential factor in how attractive this company is as an investment going forward. So on a margins basis, the business right now is somewhat underwhelming. But now let's have a look at returns on equity and returns on assets. Now when assessing a wonderful business, we typically look for returns on equity and returns on assets around 20%. So let's have a look at what Salesforce is producing. Returns on equity of 3.67% and returns on assets of 2.37%, both exceptionally low. This returns on assets figure, this returns on equity figure is very, very concerning. Returns on equity of only 3.67%, even while it's a growing company, should be far, far higher than 3.67%. Returns on equity for a growing business around 10 to 15% would be reasonable, and ideally for a company of this nature would be more around that 20 to 25% range. But returns on equity this low indicate not only a lacking degree of quality in the underlying business of Salesforce, but also a degree of management incompetency. 
Salesforce's management clearly aren't ca allocating capital well enough to make high returns on equity, and that's reflected in this exceptionally low returns on equity figure. Returns on assets once more is extremely low, and once more this is a growing company, and naturally low returns on assets are expected. However, this figure is still well, well below our 20% threshold, and lower than almost any other growth company I've seen. Very, very low returns on assets, and raising a degree of doubt about the quality of Salesforce's underlying business. Returns on assets more around that 10-15% figure would be expected for this business, and over the long term, if those returns could be achieved, that would be fantastic. Fantastic, but right now returns on assets this low is fairly concerning. So despite the company's financial strength by virtue of the high amounts of free cash flow being generated by their operations, on a profitability basis, the business is fairly concerning. Low operating margins, net margins, and underwhelming returns on equity and returns on assets. But now let's get an idea of how much Salesforce is worth as a business. Because although it may be an all right business, if it's not trading at a fair valuation, then investing in the company right now could lead to losses in the short to medium term. So coming down here, let's have a look at some basic valuation ranks. And of course, when assessing a business utilizing these simple valuation ranks, there's a lot of different metrics we can use. You've got the current ratio, quick ratio, cash ratio, PB, PS ratio, Shrilla PE, all these different fancy, fancy ratios. But when it comes to assessing a business utilizing these simple ratios, there's really only one I use, and that's the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. And the current price to earnings ratio for Salesforce is 131 0.33, a massive PE, indicating a large degree of growth assumption priced into the stock going forward. Investors in the broader market believe that Salesforce can continue to grow at an accelerated rate going forward over the next 10 years and beyond. Growth rates in excess of 25-30% to 30 on an earnings per share basis and free cash flow basis going forward over the next decade, and that's what this extremely high PE represents. Whether or not this PE indicates the company is over or undervalued is up for debate, what we are going to do later on is run a full DCF analysis, breaking down the company's earnings per share and free cash flow on a more granular level to give you a better idea of exactly how much the company is worth and how much you should be paying for each individual share of the company. But before we get started on that, we're going to break down some basic financial data associated with Salesforce. So if we come over here, we can see the revenue and net income for Salesforce between 2010 and and 2021. You can see back in 2010, revenue was around 1,305 and net income of 80.719. And then in 2021, revenue of 21,252 and net income of 4,072. So you can see exponential revenue and net income growth over the past decade. Fantastic growth and highly consistent growth on a revenue basis at least, upward exponentially over the past 10 years. And once more net income has been turned around from a very, very low figure back in 2010 to now a highly positive figure of 4,072 in 2021. So fantastic to see on a revenue and net income growth basis, very, very consistent growth and indicative of quality management in that respect. The consistency of this growth offsets some of the concerns associated with that low return on equity and low return on asset. Coming over here and having a look at the cash to debt basis for the company over time, you can see a very similar exponential trend. Back in 2010, cash on hand was around 1,241 and debt of 463. And now in 2021, or rather back in 2021, cash of 11,966 and debt of 6,281. So again, more and more cash being accumulated on Salesforce's balance sheet over time, leaving the company in a highly advantageous financial position. Although at present debt does exceed cash on the balance sheet, as mentioned before, Salesforce is an immensely high free cash flow generative business, generating massive amounts of free cash flow on a daily basis and offsetting any leverage based risks associated with the firm. The consistencies of these cash flows allow Salesforce to employ more debt than the average company whilst maintaining a fair degree of financial stability. So on a financial stability standpoint, Salesforce is absolutely fine. That's not where any, no concern lies in the financial stability of this company. Coming down here to returns on capital, you can see extremely low returns on capital over the past decade. Negative returns on capital every single year for the past 10 years. Returns on capital of negative 8% back in 2010, and then in 2021, negative returns on capital of 6%. Does this mean the business is failing? Does this mean it's underperforming? Absolutely not. Negative returns on capital are indicative of a growing business. As businesses such as Salesforce invest aggressively to expand their operations, naturally negative returns on capital are made. And this is completely understandable and very much in line with the business's growth strategy and what management is trying to execute on growing their revenue before emphasizing high returns on capital. Given Salesforce's positioning within the software and SaaS space, I would like to see higher returns on capital over time and going into the future. Returns on capital around that 15 to 20% range would be absolutely fantastic over the long term. And if that could be achieved, Salesforce would become an immensely more attractive investment. But right now, I have very little concern with these negative returns on capital. It's much in line with the company's growth strategy. So that's some basic financial data associated with Salesforce, the PE ratio to give you an idea of what the company may be worth, and also some profitability and financial strength data to give you an idea of how the business is performing. But if we really want to understand what Salesforce is worth as a business and how much we should be paying for each individual share of the stock, 
then we'd have to run something called a DCF analysis, a discounted cash flow analysis. As Warren Buffett always says, the value of any business is the cash flow that it will return to its shareholders between now and Judgment Day. And that is exactly what a DCF tells us. We're going to run a DCF on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis to give us an idea of how much earnings the company is bringing in and then how much of that is translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here, we're going to start off on an earnings per share basis. And if we come down here, you can see the earnings per share growth rates over the past 10, 5, and 1 year period. Unfortunately, given the inconsistencies of earnings over the past 10 years, we don't have figures for the past 10 or 5 year figures. What we do have is a 1 year growth rate of negative 52.7%, so a massive decline in earnings over the past year. Do I believe this negative one year growth rate will perpetuate going into the future? Do I believe Salesforce's earnings will continue to decline at this extreme rate going forward over the next decade? Absolutely not. Of course not. Going forward, I believe a more reasonable growth rate for Salesforce going forward over the next decade will be more in line with their revenue growth over the past 10 years. And their revenue growth over the past 10 years has been around 22% or 21.8% to be more specific on a 10 year basis. So we're going to utilize that as our earnings per share growth rate within our calculation. So we're going to input that in our calculation, rounding up to 22% going forward over the next decade. And with such a large decline in earnings per share over the past year, it makes sense to normalize our earnings back to 2021 rather than utilizing this extremely low 12-month trailing figure. So we're going to utilize the earnings figure from 2021 of $4.38 within our calculation. So inputting our normalized earnings figure of $4.38 on an earnings per share basis, and then utilizing our growth rate of 22% going forward over the next decade, with our discount rate of 8%, 8% of course is the long run return of the stock market, and thus a fair rate at which to discount our cash flows. Then our normalized earnings per share figure, we come up to a fair value price target of $212.10, signifying about 13% potential short-term downside to Salesforce stock at present, indicating that Salesforce doesn't present an advantageous bet for value-oriented investors, nor long-term growth investors looking to pick up a wonderful company trading below its intrinsic value. On an earnings per share basis, Salesforce is trading above its intrinsic value. But that's simply an earnings per share valuation. Now let's have a look at a free cash flow valuation. To give us an idea of how much those earnings are translating to free cash flow the company can actually use to expand and grow their operations going forward. So if we come down here and switch over to free cash flow, and if we come down here, we can see the free cash flow growth rates over the past 10, five and one year period, far more consistent growth rates relative to the lack of growth rates here on earnings per share. Tell me down here on free cash flow, we've got a growth rate of 31.4% over the past 10 years, 23.8% over the past five years, and over the past one year, a growth rate of 49.6%. So you can see massive growth over the past 10 years and also highly consistent growth over the past decade and five years. Given the massive amounts of free cash flow already accretive on Salesforce's balance sheet, I believe going forward a lower growth rate on a free cash flow basis would be justified relative to the growth rate used on an earnings per share basis. There's already massive amounts of free cash flow present on their balance sheet and thus a lower growth rate would be justified. So going over here in our calculation, we're going to utilize a growth rate of 18% on a free cash flow basis going forward over the next 10 years on a free cash flow basis. So utilizing that growth rate of 18% going forward over the next decade with our discount rate of 8%, and then our free cash flow per share figure of $8.82, taken down here for a 12-month trailing basis, we come up to a fair value price target of $213.21, signifying about 12% short-term downside to Salesforce stock at present. So as you can see, on both an earnings per share basis and a free cash flow basis, it appears as if Salesforce is trading about 12% above its intrinsic value. But which of these valuations is more suitable for Salesforce? Well, given the growth nature of Salesforce as a company, I believe it's more advantageous to value the business on an earnings per share basis rather than a free cash flow basis. Investors in a market more broadly tend to value growing companies on their earnings per share and tend to disregard their free cash flow when making a valuation for the company going forward. So with that in mind, my current price target for Salesforce is going to be $212.10 signifying about 12% short-term downside to the stock and minimal opportunity for both value-oriented investors and long-term growth investors looking to pick up a company at either fair value or below its intrinsic value. Neither of those investors will find a great degree of value in Salesforce stock right now. Going forward, I believe Salesforce will continue to be a relevant company and will continue to perpetuate growth at a meaningful rate going forward over the next decade. With almost every sector making a digital transition right now, I believe Salesforce's products will continue to be relevant and continue to perpetuate meaningful growth for the company going forward for the foreseeable future. Despite the positive secular trends around the business and the advantageous nature of their product offerings, right now the company is trading above its intrinsic value and thus for me doesn't provide a highly advantageous buying opportunity. Right now, I believe there are more advantageous opportunities in the market, and for me right now, the stock isn't a buy. 
So that was my brief yet somewhat detailed analysis of Salesforce stock, a company with decent financial strength by virtue of the massive amounts of free cash flow being generated by their operations on a daily and monthly basis, questionable profitability with low net margins, operating margins, and underwhelming returns on equity and returns on assets. Despite the growth nature of the company, these numbers are still exceptionally low given the SaaS and software nature of their business. Going forward, margin expansion proves an essential factor for the attractiveness of this company as an investment. The company appears to be trading slightly above its intrinsic value, roughly 12% above its fair value, and thus for me right now, doesn't present a highly advantageous buying opportunity. Going forward, I believe Salesforce will continue to be relevant and succeed, but for me right now, the stock isn't a buy. If you enjoyed this video, if I've helped you learn something more about Salesforce as a business, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.